Tech family, welcome. Today, I'm gonna to tell you why I created a brand new state-of-the-art YouTube studio and give you a tour of all the incredible advanced equipment in it. Let's get going. Any major endeavor like this one should have a clearly defined goal in mind. And when I set goals, I like to set big ones, stretch goals that I feel are worthwhile. My aim for this channel is to help as many people as possible make the right purchase decisions and to inspire people to lead the best life that they can. When I saw how quickly this channel was growing, I decided that I wanted to double down and see how far I could take this journey. Let's translate this into a quantifiable stretch goal. I want to hit 1 million subscribers. This is a lofty aspiration for a part-time YouTuber like me. To achieve this, I believe I need to both improve the quality of the videos and produce more videos. So I set about creating this studio. The first thing I wanted to achieve with the new studio and the equipment in it was to substantially improve the cinematography of the videos. Most YouTubers, as their channel grows, the quality of the video production increases as they invest more in gear and become more adept at disciplines like cinematography. Funnily enough, bringing a high level of cinematography to the tech and business space is actually part of my vision for the channel anyway. So I knew I wanted to just jump ahead here and invest in the equipment that would enable me to realize this. I also wanted to have interesting storytelling in my videos, so it was key that I had a variety of sets that I could use. As mentioned, I work full time, so I knew it was important to design the studio around efficiency. To do this, I analyzed what levers I could pull to improve my process for creating the videos. Simple example, having a permanent studio means I don't have to spend time setting up or packing down after a shoot. I could also hire help, so I wanted the studio to be big enough for two people to work in. And I wanted a one gigabit up and down internet connection, which enables me to collaborate with my video editor offsite. And obviously I needed to have equipment that is super easy to use and just works. I didn't want to spend countless hours trying to save money by buying gear that I would later have to upgrade. Been there, done that. In my first half a year on YouTube, I spent countless hours going to stores to try different gear or buying starter equipment only to find it wasn't good enough. When it comes to me and YouTube, time is money. So I decided to just go all in and invest in the most universally accepted best equipment. Lastly, but critically, the look of the studio had to be on brand. It's important to have a brand that is recognizable. You wanna stand out from the crowd. The brand attributes that I chose for the channel were educational, entertaining, and aspirational. I felt the aspirational part could lead into future content on how to be successful. By the way, not that I'm the most successful person out there, of course not, but I did start with very little and have been quite successful in a way that I feel is repeatable. So I'm hoping to expand the channel and share more of that kind of content in the future. Anyway, to be on brand, the studio had to look different, well-designed and feel airy. Let's now walk around the room and I'll talk about the tech. Links to all the equipment will be in the description below. For lighting, I'm using the Aperture 300D Mark II with the Light Dome 2. Many professional YouTubers use the smaller Aperture 120D Mark II. It's a good light and I have one, which I used to use in my old apartment. This is a large room. And when I first moved to this apartment, I tried using the 120D Mark II. It just didn't have enough output to light the room. The 300D Mark II is a substantial step up in light output and build quality. For lighting stands, I went with a large wheeled one for the main key light. I knew that I wanted to be able to quickly reposition it. I also wanted something super sturdy for obvious reasons, as well as being able to mount a camera to it, which will save space and time as I'd need one less tripod. I just reused the smaller Manfrotto light stands that I had in my old apartment for my other light stands. For cameras, I really wanted to go with Fuji or Canon. I love the colors from these manufacturers, but unfortunately, Fuji's autofocus is unpredictable and Canon's latest cameras have overheating problems. I film a lot by myself and I need reliable autofocus when I'm filming. And clearly, I can't have a shoot interrupted from a camera overheating. So I went with Sony. For the A-cam, I'm using the Sony A7S III. There is no two ways around this. It is a beast of a camera. A couple of standouts. One, there is no noticeable rolling shutter, which allows us to do these kind of shots with a lot of movement. Two, it's easy to use as the menus are very intuitive. In fact, a lot of common video features that I had to add to custom menus in prior cameras are now easily accessible. 
For example, adjusting the mic's volume, you just press the function button and it's right here. Three, it produces a really good full frame image. For the B-cam, which I use to reinforce points or hide sudden editing cuts like this one, I'm using the smaller Sony A6600. This is an APS-C camera, which means the sensor size is smaller than full frame. There are a bunch of things that the change in sensor size affects, but that's out of scope for this video. Anyway, I was using this camera in my old apartment as my A-cam. Since I only used the B-cam very briefly in videos, I didn't feel the need to buy a much more expensive second Sony a7S III. By the way, the benefit of using two Sony cameras is that it's easy to match the colors of the footage in post-production. My prior B-cam, the Sony a6400, which is very similar to the a6600 but with a smaller battery and lacking some other things, will now be used for filming TikTok videos and for overhead shots. Both the a7S III and the a6600 use the same large Z battery, which is really helpful. I only have to charge one type of battery for most shoots, and I won't run out of battery power mid-shoot or have to run additional cables to power the cameras. You might see a Fuji X-T4 sitting on the shelf behind me. This is my personal photo camera. I work pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In the rare occurrence that I take a break, I grab that camera and go for a bike ride or a walk, and I take it with me to snap some photos. I just love the Fuji colors. For the lenses, I went with only zooms. For the a7S III, it's the 24-70 f2.8 G Master, and for the a6600, it's the 16-55 f2.8 G Master. Zoom lenses help with efficiency, as I rarely have to change lenses since they provide the right focal range. I previously used the Sigma Trio of Prime lenses for the a6600. Although combined, these lenses provide the same focal range, when I wanted to change shots, I constantly had to move the tripod around or change the lens. Now I can just zoom in or out, more efficient. Plus, we really never shoot on the wider f1.4 aperture, which provides a crazy shallow depth of field. Audio has been a big problem in the studio and is something that hasn't been quite solved. This room has high ceilings, so there is a ton of echo. I've mounted a lot of stylish acoustic damping panels by Prime Acoustic on the walls, which has helped, but I may have to put up a few more, especially on the roof directly above the two sets. For mics, I'm using the Rode SmartLav Plus plugged into the Rode Wireless Go. This gives me the freedom to walk around the studio without tripping over an additional cable. Unfortunately, we've noticed a lot of loud clicks in the audio. Saliva in my mouth seems to be being picked up, which is nuts. So we are experimenting with a wide shotgun mic placed just out of frame. It's the excellent Deity D3 Pro. By the way, if anyone knows how to solve this, please comment below, I could use the help. In the old studio, I was using a $50 tripod that I got free with my camera. Every time I tightened it, it would drop down a bit, so I always had to factor that into every shot. I ended up going with 100% Manfrotto for the tripods, and I'm so glad that I did. I looked at numerous other brands, but I just found there were always some gotchas. So here is what I ended up with. For the main video tripod, I wanted something super sturdy, but lightweight and portable. I went with a Manfrotto Carbon Fiber One model on screen as it's a bit of a mouthful. I'm using the Manfrotto 502AH fluid head on top of it, which allows us to do some very smooth pans. When filming A-roll though, which is me talking at the camera, I normally attach the camera to the main light stand. I do this using the clamp and equipment on screen. I then put the B-cam on the video tripod. This saves space as I don't have to have a light stand and two separate tripods. Now. This Manfrotto device is my pride and joy, the Manfrotto X-Pro geared three-way head. This device saves me more time than almost everything else. It allows me to make fine-grained adjustments to the angle that the camera is filming. Prior to this, I had this camera on a ball head, and it was almost impossible to get the exact framing of the shot I wanted. By the way, I did buy a second tripod, the smaller Manfrotto B3 carbon fiber travel tripod. I wanted something even lighter and more portable for our future shots that we'll do outdoors. New York City is an amazing backdrop, and I want it to feature in more videos. Plus, a second tripod gives us some more options for two camera setups, like right now. This is the tripod that I'll be shooting TikTok videos on using this Manfrotto L-bracket. One time saver is that all cameras and tripods are using Manfrotto quick release plates to swap the cameras in and out of. No need to constantly screw cameras in and out of different systems as I change which tripod they are on. For smooth gimbal shots, I've gone with the Zion Weeble S. I wanted a compact, lightweight gimbal, and this is as good as it gets. For my desk setup, I've already made a specific video on it, which I'll link below. So I'll just go over it very briefly. The two desks are both by Fully. They are the hardwood version of their Jarvis desks. The sit-stand capability is super useful. More often than not, I can more quickly reframe a shot by moving the desk rather than moving the tripod. This saves time. Plus, it also gives us new shot opportunities. Take a look at this shot with the desk lowered, and now with it raised. On top of the desk, I have a light from room and board, the HP Omen, 
Mackie SRM524 speakers, the HP Spacer keyboard, Logitech G900 mouse, and the LG 27UAD8 27-inch 4K monitor. The HP Omen is acting as a desktop replacement, however, even though it does have 32 gig of RAM, the Ryzen 4800H CPU, and a GTX 1660 Ti, it is not good enough for my video editing needs. This is the first thing that will be swapped out this year. A couple of issues with it are that one, Premiere Pro that we use to edit videos just doesn't run well on Ryzen. It frequently crashes when exporting videos. I have connected with another tech YouTuber who has the same issue. Two, it's too slow rendering videos. Before a video goes public, I normally have a couple of folks review it. We almost always find changes and have to re-render. Any time saved in rendering is huge for me as we do it so many times and this part of the video creation process is normally the part that delays a video going live. By the way, one part of this is to do with the laptop only having 32 gig of RAM. I've recorded numerous times where the RAM is maxed out. My next video editing one will have 64 gig for sure. Also, I'd prefer an OLED screen on the laptop. That way I have both an IPS type screen and an OLED one. This covers what types of screens most users consume content on. So it's quicker for me to check if things look right rather than having to re-watch the video on my mobile phone which has an OLED screen. Anyway, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I'll definitely be posting reviews of the laptops I auditioned for this role. By the way, the chair is the Herman Miller sale chair. Over here, you'll see my Yamaha audio mixer, HP printer, and charging station. This grouping is all USB-C, this is all micro USB, and this other one is for connections like Apple's Lightning or Garmin. All the charging strips are by Anchor. I love their stuff. Their chargers are such high quality. I mean, look at this cable. They have chargers like this one that supports a ton of USB-A connections like what I need. I also like that most of their power strips use flat plugs so they don't stick out from the wall. By the way, to connect the studio to the apartment's wireless audio and lighting solutions, I use a Google Chromecast Audio plugged into the Yamaha mixer. The desk lamp and the light on the shelf are plugged into a Casa Smart Outlet by TPing Link. This allows me to control the lights in the studio and play music right throughout the apartment from my smartphone. Okay, a couple of other things to call out. Let's talk about the Network Attached Storage or NAS. Right now we use Dropbox to share files, then we back up snapshot copies on this NAS. Out of everything in the studio, I spent more time selecting the NAS setup than anything else. In fact, I went through three other NAS setups before landing on this Synology DS920 Plus with four 8TB Samsung Quovo SSD drives. This NAS is powerful enough, but not too powerful that I ever hear the fans going. On the noise from the NAS, I originally planned to use hard drives rather than SSDs. I even bought two Seagate Ironwolf 10TB drives, but the noise from this was just unbearable. I had to always remember to switch the NAS off when filming so the noise wasn't picked up by the mics. Also, when just being in the room, the constant noise from the spinning hard drives was very distracting. I tried everything. I tried setting the drives to hibernate when the NAS wasn't using them. I even tried to only run the NAS from midnight till 7am in the morning when I wasn't using the studio, which ended up being impractical because I regularly had to turn it on during the day to use it. Some people suggested moving it to another room, but that would have meant running cables through the apartment as there is no network connection in another room, and this unit needs a physical connection. So I decided to go all in and replace the hard drives with SSDs. This was one of my most expensive purchases for the studio. One reason I invested is I knew that one day I would probably need to upgrade to a 10 gigabit NAS to edit live off. I couldn't have loud hard drives sitting in the room with me, so that's another reason I future-proofed it by going with SSDs. My NAS battle was an example of me wasting time when I should have just bought something. I spent so much time trying out different setups. I could have just bought this and spent that time making some more videos, and it would have probably covered the incremental cost of the SSDs. By the way, I ended up putting the two Seagate hard drives in an external enclosure running in RAID 0. I occasionally plug it in to do an additional backup of our most important files, like our B-roll library, which includes lots of product shots. There is no point having a great NAS if you don't match it with a solid uninterrupted power supply. I wanted something quite small and not an eyesore in the studio. All I need it for is to safely shut down the NAS if I lose power. I went for the CyberPower one on screen. For the router, I'm using the fantastic Wi-Fi 6 Asus RT AX88U. And lastly, the look of the studio was designed by online interior design firm Decorilla. Decorilla makes high quality interior design accessible and more affordable. You work with a designer online, submitting photos of your space and measurements. You then collaborate discussing items you want to keep, replace, etc. Then you get 3D renderings of what the space will look like so you know everything will fit properly in the space and look good before you buy it. Finally, you get a shopping list and you can take advantage of Decorilla's discounts, which it has with most major furniture retailers. Most people, including me, save more money off the furniture discounts than it costs to use Decorilla's services. 
Please note, I am a co-founder of Decorilla, so that was a shameless plug, but I did use them. The shelves, filing cabinet and desk lamp are from Room and Board, the standing drawers and the charging station are from Ikea, and the rugs from Crate and Barrel. Well, as you can see, this studio was a massive investment and it certainly took me a long time to set up, almost four months. But I believe I've really invested for the future here and can now focus my time 100% on producing content with the knowledge that I'm maximizing my time that I'm spending on the channel. It was not cheap, but I'm glad I did it. Look, this video was a bit different for me as I tried to weave in some of my perspective on my business decisions. If you like that kind of content, let me know in the comments below. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. Also, please join me on our Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Links in the description below. Till next time, I will catch you later.